Hey everyone, today we'll be covering the library tab inside Capture One. You'll find the library tab over here on the left hand side of Capture One. If you watched my first video, then you'll know that this section here is called the browser, this is the viewer, and these little symbols up here are the adjustment tabs. The library tab is the first one of those. And the first section of the library tab is the session folders. Uh, it's important at this point to understand a distinction. Um, the session folders inside of Capture One are automatically generated. They are four physical folders that will be on your hard drive. So you'll have your capture folder, your selects, your output, and your trash. Within Capture One, you can also create what's called virtual folders. These folders don't exist anywhere on your hard drive, they just exist inside of Capture One. And it's important to get that distinction. We have physical folders and virtual folders. The physical ones you can navigate to on your hard drive, the virtual ones just exist inside Capture One. The first one of our session folders is the capture folder and each one of these folders has a different use and different meaning and I'll just quickly explain those now. So the capture folder, if we capture an image by hitting control or command K, this is where Capture One will automatically send captured images. So you'll see it appear here in a moment. It's a little bit slow because I'm using an A7R2 which is not the fastest of uh, cameras to tether, hasn't got the fastest connection. Uh, and I've only got one light turned on at the moment so you can see it's a pretty big difference between that image. That's because I'm using uh, Profoto D2s and they're lovely lights but they do have quite loud fans so not the best of things if you're trying to record audio. So anyway, that was our new image and that's, that's pretty much it. The capture folder is where all of your images that you're capturing are going to be initially stored. So they'll come into here, I'll just take another one, you'll see another image will pop into here. And I'll just show you also where it is on the hard drive. So with this new image, I'm just going to rename it test1. Ooh. test one, and we'll navigate to it on the hard drive. So if I go to my capture sessions, this is the session folder, and you can see the name of that corresponds to the name up here of our session. If I double click on that, and then go into the capture folder, scroll down, and you will see test one is there. So you can see it is a physical file on our hard drive. And I can edit this if I want. If I delete this from here, and then just navigate away and go back, you'll see that that folder, that file rather, has now disappeared. So that's our capture folder. Our selects folder is a method for kind of initially doing your first selects. Um, when you're trying to cull down your images, Capture One gives you this folder to, to very quickly do that either while you're shooting um, or as just a new folder to, to quickly do it. So you can either drag files into there, you can just click on a file in the browser and drag it into the selects folder. When you first do it, it will give you this little message here. Um, you can just click don't show that again and it won't have to, you won't have to see that every time. But now you see there's a new image inside the selects folder. Alternatively, you can use a keyboard shortcut. You can hit control or command and J and it will just send a file to the selects folder. And again, just to demonstrate, that is a physical folder on your computer inside the session folder. If I go to selects, you can see the images are now there. And I can just drag those back again into the capture folder and it moves them again on the hard drive. Next, we have our output location or output folder. Um, when you actually want to save an image, I guess, I think that's probably the easiest way of describing it. When you want to save an image, so say I want to save this image, I want to apply all of the settings that I've applied to it, everything I've done in all the, all the adjustment tabs, I want to save that and export it, let's say, as a TIFF. So there's a little recipe here already you can change all of these adjustments, but let's just leave them how they are for the minute. And it will automatically go to your output location, which is here, the output location, and that is the output folder currently. That's the automatically uh, set up way it works. So if you hit Control or Command D, that processes your image. You can also click Process down here, and it'll do the same thing. And then if we navigate to the output folder, there it is. So that is our outputted image. But what it does not do 
it doesn't touch your original image inside the capture folder. That raw file stays there. It doesn't move. What it does is it creates a new file and puts that in the output folder, which is great because it means you're never gonna ruin your original raw photo. It's a completely non-destructive way of working, which is why Capture One is fantastic. It's just like Lightroom, if you're familiar with that. Uh, it's a raw editor, essentially. Right, so that is our output folder. Um, the next one is pretty self-explanatory, but there is one thing to explain. It's the trash folder. So if you delete an image inside Capture One, if I hit the delete key, um, then it sends it to the trash. It doesn't actually physically delete it on your computer. It sends it to the trash folder. Now that may sound a little bit annoying. It's like why, if I want to delete an image, why is it sending it to the trash folder rather than actually deleting it off the hard drive and freeing up some space? Now that, that's the only downside. You're not freeing up space when you delete an image, you're just sending it to the trash folder. But it's great for, for redundancy. So if, you're, um, if you don't want to accidentally delete something that you might need, um, it just sends it to the trash folder and you're not going to lose that file. Um, so even if you do actually delete something, you're not going to lose that file, which I think is actually fantastic. Um, what I tend to do, I don't use the trash folder all that much. All that much. Um, sometimes I do, um, but once I'm actually done with a session uh, and I've exported the files that I'm going to take to Photoshop or I've just completely finished, I'm sending some stuff to my portfolio and I'm backing up the session, I'll either completely delete the trash folder um, or I'll just leave it depending on how many files are in there. But it's just a very useful thing um, so that you don't lose any images. And again, it's just nice for organization purposes as well. Um, if you do want to permanently delete anything from the trash folder, select it, hit delete again, and it will warn you and say, this is actually going to be deleted from your disk. Do you want to do that? You click yes, and it's done. The next section we need to discuss is the session albums. And I'm just gonna get rid of this one because that shouldn't be there. Get rid of you. So automatically, when you create a new session, you will have these two session albums which get created by default. We have all images and five stars. This is where we get into the explanation I was giving you a minute ago about physical folders like these ones versus virtual folders. These albums only exist inside a Capture One. You will not be able to navigate to them in Explorer or in Finder if you're on a Mac. You won't be able to find these albums. And there's two different types of albums. Um, we have smart albums where Capture One actually looks at the information you've applied to the image or it looks at the metadata of the image and then automatically brings those image into the album. I'll show you in a second. Or we have just passive albums where you name an album and you manually drag images into it. So I'll just show you. I think the manual album is pretty obvious. Um, you'd click this down arrow here and you just do an album, name it whatever you want and then drag images from the browser into that album. Um, a smart album, you can see there's already one here for five star images. So if we're in our capture folder and I just hide the viewer by hitting Control, Alt and V or Command, Option V if you're on a Mac, we can see that there are some images that have stars next to them. Now usually, this would actually denote whether something is good or bad or whatever. In this session, I've just done it for demonstration purposes, so it doesn't really show very much. But we can see there are some stars, and you can see there's some five-star images. If I go to this smart album, then all we're gonna see is the five-star images. So Capture One has looked at all our images here. It said, oh, these ones have five stars next to them. I'm gonna automatically put them in this album. Um, and you can create other ones. So I can create a new smart album. Let's call it four star and we'll go here. So all we have to do is look at these uh, search criteria. So there's lots of different ways that you can have Capture One look at the images and then put them into folders. There's tons of different parameters that it can go through. I think the most used ones are gonna be up here uh, and we're just gonna use rating. And we're saying it equals four stars. So I hit save and we have this little four star folder and all of our images that have four stars are now inside that folder. You can do the same thing for color tags or all sorts of other things. And that's pretty much it, that's session albums. They're really useful. They're a great way to quickly organize images. But remember, they do not exist on your hard drive. 
Our next section here is system folders, and this is really easy to understand. It's just a representation of either Finder, if you're on a Mac, or Windows Explorer, if you're on a PC, within Capture One. So you can navigate to anywhere on your computer. You see it just is the same kind of thing, storing all of your files. A quick way to get to your session, if you want to, would be to right click on one of your session folders and then go show in library. And there you go, it automatically navigates to where I have it stored. See, this is our session folder. Um, automatically navigates to where I have it stored on the computer. So this is within system folders. And this is our session. And here we have all of our files. Another interesting thing to note is you can actually navigate to other sessions. So this is a previous session that I was working on. This is the capture folder. I can navigate into there and see all of the images that I was shooting on that day. Um, so you can actually look at anything within Capture One. Um, the important thing to know here though, is that if you're navigating to something else within Capture One, that does not mean that you're gonna see it every time you open the session. Um, it's not being indexed by that session, okay? All that's being indexed by that session are your physical folders and the virtual folders that you've created. This stuff is just like using Finder or Explorer to look for other things on your computer. Uh, but you'll have to do that every single time you open Capture One if you wanna look at this specific file which is away from the session you're currently working on. So back to here. Um, our next section that I wanna go through is session favorites. Um, now this is similar to session albums in some ways and, and some people get a bit confused by it, but the big difference is that one of them is referencing virtual folders, that's our albums, and one of them is referencing physical folders on the computer and that's our session favorites. If I select a folder now, if I hit plus, See, I have to actually navigate to a physical folder on the computer and select it for it to appear inside Session Favorites, where obviously with the albums, I can just create any album that I want. Now, you might be wondering why is that useful? Why do I actually need Session Favorites? Well, there are three main benefits to Session Favorites. We have organization, indexing, and processing. So I'll just cover indexing first. Indexing, like I said a minute ago, um, when you navigate to different sessions images on your hard drive, so you're using the system folder section, this section here, when you're navigating to different ones here, Capture One is not indexing those uh, folders. It's not gonna see them every time you open up Capture One, you'll have to navigate to them again. But if you add something to the session favorites, it will. If you open Capture One, your session favorites will still be there and you'll have those folders there straight away. You don't have to navigate to them again on your computer. So that's indexing, pretty obvious to explain, but really, really useful. Um, the next one is organization. If you're shooting, let's say you're doing a model shoot, you're doing it for e-commerce purposes, you've got a three-day shoot in a foreign country with 15 different looks each day. So there's a lot of stuff going on and you really wanna keep organized because the art director might say to you, oh, I wanna see all images from look five on day one. And you've gotta find all of those images. If you can have physical folders on your computer for all of those images, it makes it a lot easier for you to find. And it also makes it a lot easier when you're processing those images. So let me just show you. Let's imagine we're doing a model shoot, uh, multiple day shoots, and let's just create a few folders. So I'm creating folders inside of our session. So remember, this is our session here on my computer, the capture, output, selection, trash, these are our session folders, and I'm just creating a few more folders. So let's just imagine inside day one, I'm not gonna do a full 15 looks, but we'll do a few. There we go, so I add all of that, and then inside of Capture One, we can't view any of that. It's not in the session favorites, it's not anywhere. I can see it all here, Ooh, especially if I close it and then reopen it. So I can see day one and look one, two, and three. It hasn't quite updated these other ones yet, but I'm sure we'll do that in a minute. Um, so we have day one and look one, two, and three. Now what I wanna do is then favorite those folders. So I can right click on it and go add to favorites, do that to the other ones. 
And then now those folders now appear here and they are indexed by Capture One. So any images that we add into these session favorites will now be indexed by Capture One. A great thing you can do, and something that a lot of people do on those kind of shoots, is you change your capture folder to actually be the, uh, the look that you're shooting at that moment. So imagine you have those 15 looks for day one and you're creating a new session for each day. Um, as you start shooting that look, you change the capture folder to be that folder. So let me show you. If I right click on this, I can go set as capture folder. You can also set that to be a shortcut. So now, whenever I shoot, if I take another photo, instead of it going into the capture folder, it's now going into this session favorites folder here. So if you're imagining that you have 15 looks that you're doing in a day, this is a really great way to organize things because all of your images are just gonna end up automatically organized into the folders straight away. So if you ever need to find any of them, you have them all there, it's all nice and organized. Um, and if you need to reference them, then they're all gonna be here in your session albums as well. This was the other part of indexing. So when something is indexed inside a Capture One session, it's gonna show in your, your albums and your smart albums. So if you think about those albums that I showed you, we had by default all images and five star. Obviously Capture One is not gonna show you all the images on your computer in that album. It's only gonna index the ones that are in the session. If it was gonna show you all the images on your computer, then the session would be mentally big uh, and really slow and not really very useful to you. But by adding images into the session favorites, you're then telling Capture One, index all this stuff inside my albums and my smart albums. That's all we need to know for session favorites. The next section is filters. And this is pretty obvious. I'm not gonna to spend too long on it, but I am just gonna change our capture folder back to being our standard capture folder. And you see this little symbol here, this camera denotes that that is our capture folder. You see each one of these, the output selection trash has a little symbol that tells you what it is. Now that our capture folder has been set back to the capture folder, as it should be, we can see all of our images again in the browser over there and we can see it here if I click on there, which is great. So now the filtering, it's, it's really simple. The search bar up here is the same as the search bar you have in the browser. So you can search for an actual image. So for instance, I named the one down here search just to help us. And obviously all the other ones are slightly longer, more annoying names. Um, but if I search for that, then there we go, we can see it appears, it tells us there's one image with the name search. If I delete that, then it will show us there's 64 total images inside the capture folder. Um, so it's just searching the capture folder that you're in at that moment. Um, then you can also filter things. So we can either filter by rating or color tag as standard. These are kind of the most obvious ones, the ones that you're gonna use most often. We can see that it tells us there's 37 with no color tag whatsoever, and I can click that this turns orange and it's now showing me only the images with no rating whatsoever. I'll tell you what, I'll hide the viewer by hitting Control Alt or Command Option and V. And this will hopefully be a little bit easier to show you everything. So if I toggle this off, this is now showing us 64 images. This is all the images that we have. We can see there are 11 images with one star rating. There we go. And then I can do the same and go through for two, three, four. There's three images with five star rating. And there we go, done. And the same down here with color tags. So we can see I've only used a few. There's one that has a red and there's one that has a green. Now, if you wanna add color tags or ratings, if you wanna add star ratings, um, then all you have to do is tap either one, two, three, four, or five on the keyboard, and that will rate the image from one to five. If you want it to be no stars, then you just hit zero. For color tags, um, you can either right click on the image and then go to color tag and add any color here, or as you can see, these are the shortcuts for them. So green by default is the equals symbol. Uh, on a Windows computer, you only have to press the equals button, but on a Mac, you have to press shift and then equals, and then red would be minus. Uh, again, I'm not sure on a Mac, you might have to go shift and minus. I'm not actually sure about that one. Um, if you wanna add another color, you can set up keyboard shortcuts um, so that they add other colors, but I'm not gonna go through that right now. If you wanna add another color, just right click on it and go color tag and then select one of the other colors. And if you want it to, if you want to remove a color tag, you right click on the actual color here. 
So you can do it by doing it on the image. You can go there and then remove it here, but it's a little bit quicker if you just click on the actual color, right click on it, and then you can either select a color or go none. In fact, that's quite a quick way of just rating them as well. You can just do it that way. There are lots of other parameters that you can filter by. So you could filter by date or keywords if you add keywords. So if you go over to this tab here, the metadata tab, you can add a keyword. So for instance, with this image, I've got this one selected here. If I wanted to add a keyword of uh, tutorial test, I add, oh, no, wrong section, copy that. Add that there, hit enter, and we can see it now has the keyword tutorial test. If I go to another image, we see it, there's no keyword on that image. This one has tutorial test. If I go back over to the library tab, then we can see there is now under the keywords tutorial test, there's one, I click it, and that's that. So that's pretty much it for the filters tab. It's all quite obvious. There's lots of other things you can filter by, but it's just a very useful way of quickly seeing all the images that you filtered and selected uh, while you've been going into the capture folder and other sections. That's everything for the library tab today. If you have any questions, chuck them in the comments and I'll happily answer them. If you enjoyed this video, please hit the thumbs up and make sure you subscribe so you don't miss any of my future videos on Capture One. All right guys, thanks for watching. I'll catch you later.